All right, guys, before we get started, this one was a tremendous honor to sit down with these two gentlemen and just talk dogs with them, talk judging, talk dogs, talk just the way of the field trial and foxhound community, talk the ways of the houndsmen. Um, literally sitting in the room with a Hall of Famer and a future Hall of Famer, for sure, without a doubt. These two guys dedicate more time than most, if not more than any, to going out and judging these field trials and have no skin in the game other than they just flat out enjoy going out and doing it. I have the utmost respect for these two guys. Uh, I really enjoy my weekend judging with them. It seems like every time I'm down there and around these two guys, I always learn something. So without further ado, I won't hold y'all. Let's get into this episode and drop the gate, guys. Welcome, everybody, to the Hound's Tales podcast. This is your home for field trialing and deer dog hunting. It'll be stories and discussions on the world of dog hunting. So let's drop the gate, cast your hounds, and get ready for another episode of the Hound's Tales podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take a second real quick and interrupt the show and talk about Cajun Lights. They have jumped on board to support the Hound's Tales podcast and the field trialing community. Uh, you got nighttime field trials coming up. I know I do in my series, Pleasure Running at Night. When you need to catch that next crossing, put your trust in Cajun Lights. Cajun Lights is made in America product out of North Carolina, who has been in business for over 25 years. They make cap style and bucket hat headlamps to free up that extra hand for your voice recorder or for your GPS. There are three main lights I'm gonna focus on real quick. The first is the Micro Gator, which is the lightweight option. It has four brightness levels and four color options, including red for us field trialers. Rated at 50 to 60 hours of battery life on the highest setting, this is your flood style lamp that'll do really good for us out in the fields in the short brush and be able to help us get in front of those crossings. Next up is the Cajun Bayou, which is the next step up, and it includes the same number of colors and brightness levels, but it packs a much bigger punch on that brightness level, so you can catch those crossings way down the path when you got a long road to cover. And last but not least is the top level Cajun Blinder. It has a main beam light with four levels of brightness and includes a walking light, and even with the light this bright, the burn life on it is, is rated at five to six hours on the highest setting. There is no chance of missing a dog with a light like this one, folks. All their lights come with a two-year warranty and a lifetime labor warranty. And these guys are excited to get into our sport, ladies and gentlemen. So y'all be sure if you see me out of hunt, come ask me about them. I'll have one of each of these lights on hand to show you and let you put it on your head and kind of experience it. Show these guys some love, guys. And y'all please go visit their website at CajunLights.com. And their phone number is 888 888- Seven seven three three zero eight zero. Thank you, Cajun Lights, for all you do and for trying to get into this sport. Like I said, guys, let's show them some love. Let's get back to the show, guys. Here we go. All right, welcome everybody to the House Tales podcast tonight. I am joined by two special guests, and I will let them introduce themselves. Uh, if y'all want to go ahead and introduce these yourselves, Mr. Clyde. Or, all right, yeah. yeah we'll, oh, there you go, <laughs> Clyde. Sir from uh, Kempton, North Carolina, and Jody Duval from Grifton, North Carolina. And if y'all don't know who y'all are, who these guys are, y'all are sleeping under a rock or something because they are <laughs> absolutely, uh, and one of them already is a legend in the sport for sure, and then in future Hall of Famer, I, I know 100% that's coming down the pipe. So uh, thank y'all guys for joining. We are currently sitting in a hotel room in, uh, in, in the big town of Emporia, Virginia. Uh, we are judging the Southeastern FHA down here at Billy Pools and uh, just got done fighting the rain off for a little while. Did y'all, uh, y'all manage to stay halfway dry out yeah, there? Yeah, we did. It wasn't so bad. Yeah. That umbrella didn't leak. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, you come prepared. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I know I brought an extra pair of clothes to the pen just in case I had to get changed. I keep a set in my truck, and plus I had three umbrellas. <laughs> <laughs> and some extra. And a rain suit. 
<laughs> well, guys, uh, like I said, I appreciate y'all joining. Uh, you know, first we'll we'll kind of touch on some uh, recent happenings. Uh, I believe it was at the All American, right? You were yeah. awarded the uh, 2023 Walter Folsom Award. You know, that's great. Uh, congratulations on that, and I know that was a like you know uh, very special. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know any of the story behind that award? You know, I don't really know the story. He was a judge uh, and judged the All-American for years. Gotcha. And uh, this award is something that he got, his family got started to. Okay. To be able to award uh, one another judge. Gotcha. Was, uh, they've got several stipulations. So. Right, right. Now, is that something they do every year at yeah, the All-American? every year. Gotcha. Every year. Gotcha. Gotcha. Already... And, and it's voted on by the judges. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. That's awesome. You know, Guardia, but that's one reason I ended up going to Mississippi because last year they voted me in as the Walter Focus Award, so therefore you got to go the next year <laughs> to be able to receive the award. <laughs> so we've already chosen the one that's going to be for 2025. Gotcha. So your hand was kind of dealt then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, y'all, y'all, y'all both went down there, right? Right. That's okay. what I thought. That's what I thought. Looks like it was a pretty good hunt from what I can it was. tell. It was. Seven hundred and eighteen, eighteen, nineteen dogs. Uh, Man, the first morning. <laughs> I bet that was a roar. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a beautiful place. If anybody had never been to Grenada, Mississippi, to run dog, it's a beautiful. There's a lot of deer, but it's yeah. a beautiful place. Right. That's all I ever hear is how pretty that is oh, down yeah. there. It's awesome. just how many acres is it? Twenty-two thousand acres. Golly. <laughs> surrounded, surrounded three sides by water. <coughs> Corps of Engineers got all the water frontage and they maintained the roads. These roads in there everywhere. Wow. As far as getting around. Right, right, right. right. And, stuff. and they said it's pretty much just one road that kind of blocks off the last the last box end of that, right? Kind of one, one well, road. Well, there's two bridges there. You come in one and go out the other one. Okay. And, uh, of course, one of them has been out for been in construction years. now for two years. <laughs> so you got to go in and out and go back the same way. That sounds about right. <laughs> You can't go nowhere to not have any kind of construction. So, uh, so how long have y'all been judging, um, Mr. D- Mr. Duvall? Why don't you start us off with that one? Uh, do you know what year we started judging? It when did Penny? Late seventies. Late seventies. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. my first outside hunt or big hunt, major hunt was uh, the North Carolina State on the outside at Lawrenceburg. Okay. And uh, I think I ended up doing it about fourteen years straight. Man. And then it kind of faded out and started into pens and all that. Gotcha. But they used to have the North Carolina State, the PD, and the South Carolina State was all at Lawrenceburg. Okay. And uh, and that was outside, I think. Yes, right? sir. All yeah. of them outside. All outside. Back then, they weren't no pens. I mean, pens they, it was right. all outside. <coughs> right. Y'all, excuse me. I'm still getting over this thing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I I started doing a lot of the outside hunts too. But my original. Uh, Pete Warren and, okay. and his comrade, comrade had built a pen in our county. Gotcha. 600 acres. Right. 600, 800. 800 acres. And uh, we started, field, you know, judging and stuff. Back then, you judge at night with a light. Right. And uh, right. it was strictly Virginia gray style. fox. Right. Running. No code. No code back then. And uh, all the scores were figured by hand. The long way. Long night. Yeah. It's a pretty... Uh, they're trying to get it all done. Yeah. And somehow, me and Mr. Sutton here ended up doing a lot of them and started taking them up by hand. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we learned how to do it. I mean, <coughs> a well, lot of the folks now don't know how to do it long hand. I don't know. I don't know that I can do it. <laughs> I I, you know, I've judged and, and helped figure scores with people that Gerald Simmons. Okay. Uh, Mr. Walter Clayton. Right. Uh, this is from some yeah. from up this way. Right. And, uh, of course, a lot of us too. Charlie yeah. Boyd. Charles Boyd. Yeah. Oh, man, we could go. Charles Graham, Evan McAvain. <laughs> we could name them. Legends. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hubert yeah. Clemens, Lonnie Ward. Man. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. We too. still go to Lonnie's. He's got a pen. Uh, yeah. Lonnie Ward and help him. Uh, he'll have a, a two day or three day. Right, right, right. Yeah, two a year. And what was the name of the pen that was behind your house that you said it was built? Savannah, Fox Savannah, Pinder. Savannah. Pete okay. Warren, and uh, there was at one time there was five involved. Yeah, in gotcha. So did y'all start at the same about the same year, same time? Yeah, pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty close. Me and Pete started a few years as far as uh, like judging the North Carolina State, but Clyde was still running at that time. Okay. 
So me and Pete done some hunts that, uh, and Clyde was running. I got you. And that was the question I was going to ask. Did y'all do any running? You know, I, 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 remember, you I know, did. I did. You yeah, did? Yeah. I, I participated in, in several of them. But. I did a little local fox hunting with some right. of the boys around, but I mostly deer hunted. Gotcha. And, uh, well, I was a big deer hunter, too. Yeah. <laughs> y'all still do oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I figured. I, I do. I, I've, uh, I've made about five trips to Montana. And killed a uh, like a 152, okay, and a 164, right, right. some other bigger, nicer bucks. Yeah, come back home with these little basket. <laughs> <laughs> don't get the plants right there. Right, uh, right. I, uh, matter of fact, I don't even own a dog right now. No kidding. No. I just got rid of mine about two years ago. I wow. had COVID and pneumonia, and I was. I asked the doctor. I said, "When am I going?" I had deer dog. Yeah. And uh, he said, you're going to be 14 to 16 weeks before you get, and it was right at the beginning of the hunting season. Of course. So I called my buddy and I told him, I said, you come get these dogs. I said, do what you want to with them, but don't leave me in the feet. Right. And I'll soon be 71 years old, about a month, and I decided it was time to get out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame I you. I miss though. them, though. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of nice, though, being able to go home and just go home and go to sleep if you need to go sleep. <laughs> and plus, a lot of the boys, like Rhino, some of the boys, you know, that fox right. hunt around the house. I've been with him, uh, Greg Weave. They several that fox hunt mm -hmm. and cat hunt. Right. And I I go with him. I, I got, got a brother that rabbit hunts. Me and him rabbit hunted all of January, February. So. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's getting bigger and bigger, I tell you. There are a lot of people running these rabbit dogs now. Boy, that Kelly Meadows has got some, and they, him and Cody can kill a rabbit. That's what I, I see him posting <laughs> on there. <clears throat> I see him posting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Clyde, he's a trap fisherman. I, I'll say that. I see your profile picture on Facebook. You got a big old fish in your hand. And when when, I, when uh, I got a, one of the best friends, uh, we grew up together. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been married 56 years. Okay. Just Congratulations. February 18th. To the same woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, That's the important part, right? My, I've got a friend, a high school friend of mine, that uh, we double dated together. Mm -hmm. We got married within six months of each other. Wow. Had our first child within six months. And had the second one in six months. He had the third one, and I stopped. We stopped, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we stopped with two. But, uh, he missed, somebody missed the memo on that we, one. We deer hunted a lot. He was, we, we went to Montana when okay. we were out there and stuff. And, and we got back here and just got... Kind of wasn't interested in the little basket books. Right, and right, right. Got yeah, spoiled we, on the we, big we, ones. We wanted a challenge and we started trout fishing, speckled trout fishing. Okay. So that's where we got started in that. I gotcha. And I about soon catch the three pound trout as I had to kill eight point books. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> My patience is about like turkey hunting with fishing. If I don't get a bite here in a few minutes, I'm. Yeah. I'm packing the reel up. I'm going home. Now, that's something I've got into the last few years, and I love the turkey hunt. Yeah. It's like I told you, if I go in the morning and I can get that rascal to gobble, that's done made my day whether right. I kill one or not. That's me and George were talking about that. I didn't, I didn't realize it before, but George is a hardcore turkey hunter. He's like, he'll, he'll skip field trial to go turkey hunting. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, man, it's something about them turkeys, man. You get them things gobbling and coming in, it just makes your heart it pump. Is. We got a lot more around home than we used to have. A lot of them had been transported in to right. other locations in the counties and different counties. Right. But it's nothing to see this time of the year, 50 yeah. or 60 of them. About in the fields and stuff like that. Yeah. See, right where I live right now, <coughs> back when uh, I was, say, 14, 15 years old, mm -hmm. that's when I fox hunted a lot with our, went with them older fella. Right. We didn't have any deer. Yeah. And now, where I live, I can get up in the morning and they'll like be 25 standing in the front yard. Right. right. We've got plenty of deer now, but back then, they weren't even a deer season in, in the county we lived in. No kidding. Time. Wow. I know that's what they said about our hometown was, I mean, back in the 80s and stuff like that, it was, it was you, you, ran, you ran a red or a gray fox more than you ran a deer. I mean, yeah. That's, yeah, it seems to be the common thing in a lot of places. Uh, Warehouser had, a, you know, the big, put, that put would plant, they had a lot of land and they had deer. Right. And the boys that fox hunted around the house would take their fox dog and go down there and run deer because mm -hmm. they could bring them right back. They wanted no deer, so then they fox hunted. They didn't have to have them broke. Right. And, uh, they do now. Yeah, they better <laughs> yeah. now. You better have beagles broke too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Now y'all are um, like I said, y'all y'all judge, man. It looks like every weekend y'all are somewhere, or every other weekend y'all are somewhere. How many judges y'all putting in a year now? We did twenty six last year. Twenty six, <laughs> all multi day hunts. That's right? uh half your weekends, a uh, two and three day hunt. Wow, yeah. wow. And y'all kind of pair up most of the time. Y'all, yeah. if you're going, he's going, oh, yeah. kind of thing, right? Yeah. 
there's no telling how many miles me and Mr. Clyde rode together. How many hours we roomed together. I believe How it. many hunts we judged together. <laughs> I believe it. And I, Pete, don't forget Pete Warren. He, uh, yeah. he, he judged a bunch with us. Right. He judged more with, uh, with Clyde because there was a few years I couldn't judge. I, the, my job wouldn't let me. I got you. So I kind of got out of it for what? It was about four, five, six Both years. Hmm. Man, that's, I, well, I, I got a lot of respect for that, that, you know, neither one of y'all do any kind of competing and nothing like that. It's no, all man. just, I have, but not yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Did you have any success when you were competing? Oh, yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Uh, Did you make any champions? No. No? No, no. I've had some places, you know, but no right, right, right. champions. I don't know if you had made a champion back then or not. No, I was too busy deer hunting. <laughs> <laughs> he had I some had, good I deer dogs then. <laughs> As many as back when you didn't you have tracking calls. Right. I've had 52 dog hounds. And and I could take whatever was ready to go on the mornings I got ready to go. Right. Something maybe left out, yep. something hurt, or right. they need, or yep. uh, I'd load up a truckload and Go on take off. Now. You know? I've had as many as 60. <laughs> I tell you. And like you said, back then there was no tracking call. Right. I'd load up 20 dogs, go down and turn out. I might not bring home but five or six. They'd yeah. be scattered. Right. It might take three or four days to get them all back. Yep. But the, most of the time the dog would come back. Plus, most of the time back then, if a man caught your dog, he would call that number on right. the collar and you would get them yeah, back. Yeah, trouble mean, about it. Want, want a whole lot of trouble back then. Well, like you said, you know, when, the way I was raised with deer dogs and stuff like that, all of our dogs homed. Mm -hmm. We could yeah. take him go out Friday after we got home from work or after I got off of school and I'd just go flip the latch. That's how I was raised, you right. know. We flipped the latch, let him go, then they'd come back, they, you know, if it was on Saturday, we'd let them stay out for the weekend and enjoy the time. They'd bask out in the yard, play out in the sun, you know, that kind of thing. And then Sunday we'd put them back in the lot. Yeah. But, a lot of that's been bred out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The pins has done a lot of that. I right. mean, you know, and I'm not faulting the pins because that's what people want. And I'll tell you, it's getting to where it's uh, hard to find a place to deer hunt on the outside. Mm -hmm. If you ain't got somebody like Warehouser or something like that, it's, oh, it's hard to find a place oh, in yeah. North Carolina. Yeah, I believe it. It's, I mean, it's getting like that in Virginia, too. You know, we got a couple state forests and stuff like that, but, you know, we kind of, we don't really, well, we got some people to go up there, but most of the time you kind of leave that to the steel hunters and stuff, yeah. you know, let them have let them have that and we keep ours on the, on the lease land and private land right. and stuff like that. Yeah, um, basically what it is at home. Right. I want to take a second and talk about Frontline Optics real quick, guys. They are a sunglasses company that is owned and operated by Frontline Workers, Fire and Emergency Services, guys. They have designed glasses with us in mind, with the Frontline Workers in mind, people that are out there using your sunglasses every day and don't want to break the bank and have a pair of sunglasses get broke. And have to and just be out of that coming i mean that crazy amount of money guys these are high quality polarized sunglasses that are durable affordable and ultimately represent our lifestyle in addition to that a portion of all proceeds from the sale of these glasses is donated to first responders children's foundation it is in support of those children who have lost a parent in the line of duty how cool is that guys so guys check these guys out frontlineoptics.com Go to their website, and when you go to check out, be sure to type in the promo code HOUNDSTALES. That's T-A-L-E-S. In the in, while you check out, and you'll receive 15% off your first purchase. Also, these guys have a first-time replacement, no questions asked program. Be sure to check that out, guys. These guys are awesome. I can't thank them enough for jumping on board, and uh, we'll uh, get back to the show. So, um, how many hunts have y'all mastered in the past couple of years? Clyde's mastered a whole lot more than I have. Right. I've mastered some hunts, but I, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather judge than I had mastered. <laughs> right. I get that. I get it. I get it. How many think you mastered in a year? Oh. Out of 26 <laughs> last year, he probably mastered 20. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Yep. I mean, he did. Yeah. Yeah. And you were, uh, you were the master at the All-American, right? You last, year. last year, yeah. Last year. Yeah, that's what I thought. Who was uh, it this year? Uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis Ray. Lewis Ray. Okay. He's from and he's done an outstanding job. He was really good. Gotcha. I've, uh, I mastered 
I mastered All American in 2006, the okay. first time. Wow. It was in uh, the pen in Manning, South Carolina, the big. Mm -hmm. You probably don't remember it anymore. I've heard of it, but, but I've, that yeah. was the pen back then. It was right. a thousand nine hundred sixty acre pen. And uh, we had nine hundred seventy dogs there, and we, we had to figure it a long way. <laughs> yeah, I figured, that's when Gerald Simmons and Mr. Walter Cleet and some of those others were there. Right. And we broke we broke uh, the papers down to set a group here and a group here, and we had three groups to figure the scores. Wow. And uh, but. How many hours did that take? We got we got it all done by about dark that afternoon. <laughs> right. and, uh, well, I tell you what, we have been in judges' meeting figuring it by hand when they would bring us supper. Oh yeah, I've done that for several <laughs> Take a cat nap and get ready for roll call, right? <laughs> Man. But, so uh, the, the year, the two years prior to me, there was 970 there mm -hmm. uh, in 2006. I, I guess it would be in 2004 mm -hmm. in the same pen. There was a thousand and thirty. Can't tell you anything. That uh -huh. pen, that was the only pen I've ever been to that you could have a three day hunt with a thousand dogs mm -hmm. and three or four weeks later have another hunt with six, seven, eight hundred dogs. Wow. He kept it loaded with game. I mean it was it was good running. Just a good running on the outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. That big of a pen it, it makes sense. You could get lost in it. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's kind of how what uh, Swainsboro is, ain't it? It's, yeah. it's a little bit smaller than right. Manning Pen, but yeah, it's all kind of terrain in Swainsboro. Man, from that's swamps, what I haven't been to yet. And I really from want swamps to, get down to there. pine thickets to, uh, you know, <laughs> Look, from, from the, the, the camp <coughs> in uh, Swainsboro mm -hmm. to where I normally judge. It takes me about 17 minutes to get there. Wow. <laughs> of course, now, you know, you got to drive slow. Right, right, still, right, right. It takes about 17 minutes to get to the back of the pit. <laughs> Man. I know I took some boys. And I had a buddy come with me the other week to a one-day hunt up here, and he'd never been here before. And mm -hmm. We went to the back end, and I, he was like, are we still in the pen? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, we're still, yeah. We're still in here. Don't worry. <laughs> So, um, well, and you know, I kind of sparked a question, and we'll kind of throw this one on you. When you're mastering and judging these outside hunts, how much different is it to do the outside is it than doing it in the wire? What's what's kind of some differences that you're you're working with on doing that kind of thing? Well, the biggest thing, the game is not as plentiful on the outside as right. it is in the bins. That's the first thing. Yeah. And dogs can just scatter. Mm -hmm. I mean, go miles. Right. Especially these dogs, these pin dogs that are bring them down there and turn them on the outside. They had and, never hunted on the outside. Right, and, uh, right. Just like the All-Americans this year, mm -hmm. I mean, we had dogs that within the first 30 minutes was five miles from where they were cast at. Mm. That's and, way on that zone. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they got them all back, had a couple run over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, little right. odds and things. Yep. But uh, a lot of difference in the pen versus outside. You're not going to get the crossings on the outside, you no. can on the inside, mm -hmm. number wise. Right. Uh, you're probably going to see a lot of more hunting and trailing yeah, and that sort of thing, you know, on the outside and what you do in the pen. Right, right. And I was kind of surprised that we didn't, that there wasn't as many trailing scores down there this year. Yeah. You know, I know that's a lot of times which, what you see is not necessarily the full category, but at least a handful of trailing scores. And I think there was only one trailing score this yeah, year, right? You're right. So when you, when you got your judges out there and doing that kind of thing on the outside, are you, those guys are kind of chasing Right, they're right. not really sitting they're, in one spot. No, they're in radio communication. You use like marine type radio, right. and everybody's on the same channel. Right. The judges are on one channel, and the rest of the participants and stuff is on a different channel, gotcha. supposedly. Right, you know, right, <laughs> right. You know, you know how that but that's how you communicate with try to, and, and some of the local guys down there are really helpful. Right. And somebody called and said, the dogs have gone to the boat hole. Yeah, yeah. Where, where's your butt hole? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, they can tell you pretty quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. To get, and that's what and I. And if they get on some dogs, you know, they'll say, uh, just, uh, "One guy, I believe his name. What's his name? Uh, David Simpson." Yeah, Yellow Jack. Well, we call him Yellow Jack. Right. But he lives there, and I met just like this year. I rode with Mike Sutton. I say, and we get on the phone. Yellow Jack, we heard them dog. Now, how do we get to him? <laughs> and he can tell you right, you know, right where to go. And everybody keeps in communication. <laughs> so the roads, I mean, it sounds like they all have like names and stuff. Oh, yeah. They give you like a map of like kind of the area, kind of help you along and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. a lot of it's 
going year after year and learning. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in uh It in takes two or three years to learn most of it. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Just having to go by memory and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a lot of fun though. A yeah. lot of fun. So what's one of y'all's favorite places to go judge at? Probably Craig Moore. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Just wall to wall. Always, <laughs> always plenty of running. James, all James Ray always has it in good shape. Plenty of game. No uh, it's a good place too good. Yeah. You can yeah. see the dog. Right. And uh, they yeah. put on a good show. And we right. enjoy, oh, I do enjoy a lot of awards being. Right. Chadburn. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's a smaller pen, but it's a lot of fun too. <laughs> That's South Carolina, right? No, it's actually North right Carolina. On the, it's on the line. Right on the line. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it was down that way. I uh -huh. can't remember yeah. what state it was in. It's in North Carolina, but it's, what, that ain't 10 miles to South Carolina? Yeah, like that. Maybe, maybe less. Matter of fact, Lonnie lives in North Carolina, and his dog pen's across the road uh, from his house and all that, and it's in South Carolina. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> There's got to be some tax stuff going on with that now. I'm just kidding. I think that's a lot of pins. Uh, Paul Caskey? Yeah. Uh, uh, his pin there. It's a good running pin. I've heard that. I ain't been to that uh, one either. Shoot, there's a lot of evading bond. Yeah. It, most time he keeps it pretty pretty well, you know, stocked and all. Right. Tri triple B. Yep. Yep. Right. That's it. I, I was I was actually expecting a, a different answer. The Creedmoor kind of threw me. That's and I guess it's just because of how good the running is oh, always yeah. down there, right? And plus, it's about what eight hundred acres or mm -hmm. something like that. Something like that. Yep. And not, we can get Creedmoor about the same amount of time we get here. Gotcha. We're about two, about two hours. hours. From Creedmoor two hours from Emporia. That's about how I am. Yeah. Just the opposite direction, obviously. And two hours to uh, Lawrence. Okay. Right. Let's see what we're trying to do now. A lot of the instead of that. 14, 15 hour drive to Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> Them two hour drives are a lot, but and see like Triple B. Right. From our, we can make it in less than an hour. Oh, yeah. We don't that's even stay at the motel. We just go down there and judge and then drive back home. Yep. That's what I like about when I when I can get judge or run at Hollywood. Man, I'm back home by 1 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm back home by 1, 1 30, and we're ready to I can get stuff done the rest of the day. Yeah. I'll tell you <laughs> what, now, one of the best hunts I, as far as judging, we had the. Uh, it was the first year that the North Carolina State was in the little pen up there. Was it Forrester Pen? The one that Richard Evans had got there in South Carolina. Yeah. Now he had it packed, and it was three days of solid roll. Mm. That's, That's the good. first time they ever had that. That was after they lost the big pen, and they had it in the little pen. Right. But now it was wall to wall. I've been to a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. Wall to wall. But I've been to some. Lucky you one or two crawlers. Yeah. Yeah. We were we were at one last year. <laughs> <laughs> so what has been y'all's and you kinda of mentioned it there, what's been one of y'all's favorite hunts that y'all have been to to judge? Or that even not even that well, y'all do mostly judge it, but what's been one of y'all's more favorite hunts, more memorable hunts? Hmm. That's a tough one, right? <laughs> so we there's a whole lot of Yeah, uh, probably Probably the, the, the hunts that were held in the Manning Pen, the big pen down there at that time. Gotcha. Uh, a lot of the bigger hunts. Right. Back then you'd have, you know, if you didn't have five, six, seven hundred dogs. Yep. No much to it. Really? Uh, like I said, that All-American we had 1,031 years and 972 years later. I don't think you'll ever see that again. No, I don't know anywhere that not you not can even do Not with the economy like it is right. now too. Right. Well, there's really nowhere you can run. I don't think there's a pen big enough to hold that many anymore. No. I don't know what the limit is at, um, at Swainsboro. Because I think Swainsboro is the biggest pen that's still It's about 1,800 right? acres, I yeah. think. Yeah. I think that is the biggest one that's still active, Probably right? so. Yeah. <coughs> well, I've been, I've been all the way to uh, Harrisburg, Mississippi, to mm -hmm. Ronnie McMillan's pens and stuff out there. In right. And Gina, Louisiana. Went to... Uh, that was a good Terry, Terry Walker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, asked us to come to Louisiana yeah. and judge right. the Louisiana State and the Western Derby at the same time, running the same time. Right. Well, he climbed the master. I mastered it. He flew us, he and him out there. No kidding. Yeah. Got to the airport, rented us a vehicle, and drove to the motel and on out to the pen. That right. There. <sighs> sent us back home. <laughs> and that was a good hunt. That's big really timing right there. Y'all yeah. made it up to Canada yet? No, no I was not. I had a chance to go one time and my job wouldn't let me and I just had never got an opportunity to go back. I got you. I think if I pursued it, I probably could, but right. I hadn't pursued it. I got you. 
<laughs> I think that'd be a- Age has got a little something to do with it. <laughs> oh, come on now. Age is only a number, right? I don't know. Would you rise from here to Mississippi? <laughs> I tell you, you know, I'm only getting, you know, with work and, and life and everything, you know, I'm only getting, you know, maybe five, six, seven hunts. I couldn't imagine. What did you say, 26? Last year. We, we, we'll probably do I believe it was about 24 the year before. Yeah, but we said we were going to No, we did 25 the year before because we said we were going to cut back. Right. Then we ended up doing 26. <laughs> it's going to be 25 or so this year. <sighs> What's y'all's next one on the on the books? Uh, uh, that'd be uh, Triple uh, triple B uh, Hunter's Horn Spring yeah, Class. Spring Class. Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Is that the one they had originally set, or is that the date move? To one? Yeah, that's the one they had originally set. I got you. They had two. They usually had one in uh, January and then one in uh, uh, March. Right. The one in uh, January, they moved it to May. Gotcha. I, could, I knew they had moved it. I couldn't remember what week. Well, you got you got to put a crown in, in Terry Walker's on Terry Walker's head. Yeah. He has made a big difference in the the dog situation now right with registrations okay his contributions he's made to the hunts that hunter's I mean, horn has really yeah grown up. since he t- t- started doing all he's well, done he, a, he put a lot of time and money he just, effort. just sold it but he's still going to be there for right i forgot what he did he two years two years that's right i thought it was two yeah mm-hmm. i thought when he made the post and or yeah. whatever the whole thing was was i guess two when years. was <laughs> and he's got a uh he's got a big hand in the masters Right yeah, between national masters, because I thought there was kind of a direct kind of correlation between the masters and the horn. It seems like a lot of their stuff oh, is affiliated. It is. It, it, is, it, is, it, it is. always has been. If you look, a lot of his <coughs> hunts, it'll say the hunters on masters or you know. right, right, right. Um, and a lot, you know, a lot of the pins are going to masters hunting now. Yeah. So. I know the series that I'm doing. That's I went. I went to the Masters. It seems like a lot of people want to run for those those one day option points mm-hmm. and the, that extra that extra little bit. I mean, I I got a lot of respect for that. And I think it's a cool I think it's a cool deal that they got going on with all that. But like you said, I mean, even since you know I've only been in it in the sport since 2020, and I've noticed it yeah. from what the Masters has done and the, and the Hunter's Horn and you know it's just. It's incredible that yeah. it looks like it's going in the right direction on everything, you know. Not to make it a money sport, but, you know. It, well, it's got to be more expensive. It's got to. I mean, it, it already has. Right. Uh, compared to what it was, say, 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I hear a lot of people complain about it, like, oh, you know, I used to go to a hunt and pay 50 bucks and run three days. Like, yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Man. But they don't realize the price of game has gone up. Uh, hotel <laughs> rooms. Need, hotel rooms. Right. Uh, judges meals, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of expense that people don't mm-hmm. don't know if they've never done. Right, right. I want to take a second and talk to y'all about Chestnut Mountain Feed Company in Concord, Virginia. They are my go-to feed supply store. And if y'all are in the area or are even close to the area, y'all be sure to check these guys out. It is where I solely get my dog food from, my leashes and collars and stuff like that. And they also have some farm supplies as well if you're into that kind of thing. So y'all be sure to check these guys out. And like I said, in Concord, Virginia, and let them know that you were sent there by the Hounds Tales podcast and give them, they have my seal of approval because they are the best feed store around. And um, they really, truly are a blessing to have. So, all right, guys, let's get back to the episode. And it's after after organizing, getting all these hunts for that series. I'm, I mean, I couldn't imagine trying to do it for a three day. Yeah. Hmm. So, you know, last question I kind of got wrote down, and I want to kind of pick y'all's brain on this. You know, we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. Y'all don't have any dogs right now. Do I don't. What makes y'all keep coming back to judge? What What is so special about it? And, you know, because a lot of people, not, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that people, all people are selfish, but not a lot of people are going to devote this much time to something that they're not having some kind of benefit coming back towards them, you know? What ma- what makes y'all continue to push this hard and, and judge like y'all judge? Well, you know, if you didn't enjoy something, you probably wouldn't do it. Right. And, of course, you know, I get burnt out after a while. Sometimes it seems that way, but uh, I still enjoy the fellowship, right. uh, the camaraderie. That's the key. Fellowship. Uh, fellowship. And, yep. 
and to be able to friends that right. I've accumulated over over the years. Yeah. So it's uh, it's not too hard to keep coming back. <laughs> I tell you, I don't think there's many states that we ain't met or judged with somebody from that state yeah. or been in room with them or whatever. I believe it. I mean, it always reminds me, you know, I think one of the first hunts I judged up here, I met Bobby Parker. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. And Georgia. Man, I mean, me and him was just, of course, I'm a white dog guy. Uh, that was, <laughs> that's where it went from there on. It was, once I mentioned white dog, it was, he was, he was dead set on Keenan on talking to me. He did to talk with Danny Fowler, don't he? <laughs> Oh, I, I've seen his dog. He's been placing a lot here lately, right? Hey, uh, Danny and uh, Stephen Fowler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they do, uh, Stephen used to help with the PD in South Carolina State. And right. But at one time, they didn't have any white dogs. <laughs> but I think they do now. Right. <laughs> so the fellowship and this, the enjoying it. It's just the pure enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah. And I still, I love, to look, I love to watch a good dog. <laughs> right. Right. I enjoy it. I love to hear them run. Yep. I mean, I that's if it weren't for that, I, like I said, the, hearing them run, the fellowship, and all that. Yeah. It wouldn't be a sport anymore. That's right. And the thing is, I mean, <coughs> you know, y'all know this, but if if to me, everybody should have to judge something. Oh, I think yeah. you should always need to judge. You know, you got a lot of people. I'm not saying everybody does it. I mean, a lot of people do do you know do both. But man, it's you know. We, we got to have more people step up and judge well, these hunts. I, I, I think, especially myself and Pete, mm -hmm. Pete Warren, we've done a lot of traveling together over the years. But I think one of the main things we tried to do is make sure things were done right. Gotcha. Honestly, mm -hmm. honest, right. you know, uh, and try to help train mm -hmm. some of the other judges towards mastering or right. rules. If you need to know the rule book, if yeah. you don't know the rule book, right. you're going to be lost. Yeah. Uh, and that's the first thing. Right. Know, learn it, know it. Yeah. And uh, just refer back to it too as you get into the situation. There's probably no other situation that you can think of that I haven't been in over the last <laughs> 40 some years. I believe it. That, that, you know, to try to handle it. <laughs> right. In, right. In a, in a reasonable manner. Yeah. But uh, um, I know when I jumped, when I mastered this up last year, right. I, I mean, I was so nervous. God, I was nervous. <laughs> but I think I read I read both rule books front to back yeah. three times the week before yeah, just right. to make sure that I kind of remembered everything. I got both rule books right there in my truck. I still carry them with me yep. everywhere I go. I mean, you never know. <laughs> you never know when a weird situation is going to arise and you need to go back and look. Um, how y'all think George is doing? Hey, oh, hey, George, yeah, I've, yeah. I've uh, judged with him after him before. Yeah. He judged one at Creek Bowl. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we were down. Uh, George does a good job. A but good see, job. we've got us older judges going to be phasing out for too many more years. <laughs> so we've got to get some young We keep group. saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be 25 more next year. <laughs> Look, I have been in judges meeting back when I was like 64, 65 years old. Go in a judges meeting, be 20 some judges, and I'd be the youngest judge in there. Yeah. And, uh, but a lot of uh, something else too that plays a lot of these uh, guys that are judging now mm -hmm. are learning to judge in the pen. They've never been on the outside and right. seen what a dog can do, you know. Right. And, uh, it's like Pete Warren said, he had a young boy, mm -hmm. and uh, the young guy come and asked him, said, Mr. Pete said, Will you show me how to score a dog hunt? Mm -hmm. And it's like Pete said, I can't show you how to score a dog hunt. Right. You've got to get out there and watch him and know what he's doing. That's right. Because, and I can't tell you, you yeah. know, if you ain't never hunted and watched a dog, you <coughs> I, You know, I've always, I know the pen stuff is different than deer hunting and stuff like that, but growing up deer hunting, you know, I, I hunted with coon stock, tree stock dogs, <laughs> slow <laughs> dogs, oh, yeah. man, the, the trailing dogs. I really learned what, not saying that I'm an expert at what a hunting and trailing score is, but by no means, but I got to really watch a dog hunt. You know? See that's what, but you they can't nobody tell you what the, how right. to do it. You right. got to see it before yep. you see it. Yeah, yeah. And I've heard different people say how they do it. You know, I guess as long as you stay consistent, you know, I can uh -huh. respect that. Um, but like when I'm, and it's something about like when the, when the running got kind of low, a little low today. First place, I went straight to the woods, man. Oh yeah. Oh man, I went straight for it. I'm, I'm hunting for hunting. Is what I always call it. I'm hunting for hunting. I love going in there watching them dogs flipping leaves over and getting off the beaten path and slowing down and breaking down and getting after them. Well, I do want to touch on this anyway before we get through you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
we've got a local organization in our county, mm -hmm. the Lowell County Hunters Association, that we organized in 1983. Wow. I've been president of it every year but one since 1983. And we were the original Deerham Field Trial. We started the Deerham Field Trial. Wow. And they're the most popular thing going on in North Carolina now. Yeah. yeah. There's a series of seven or eight. Right. And from those, 30 dogs qualify for what they call the best of the best. Yeah. And so we started that. We had a guy that come in and said, we need to do something, you know, beyond yeah. just the normal fun hunts. But uh, they're they're pretty big. Uh, we just, I don't remember, General Trenton just had 500 some dogs, I think. Man. How many was it we had the first year? Uh, I don't remember, Jody. We've, we've had. It was well, and they ran 700 dogs. Oh, no, yeah. Man. Yeah. They, uh, they just finished that series up, didn't they? they? just finished yeah. it. Like it was a grassy branch, right? That's where they ended oh, up. that's a different series. Different series, okay. Well, you've got the, the grassy branch, then you've got the ones that's up around us. Okay. It's all in the same series. I, they changed all that two, two years ago. Gotcha. Used to, that was, they were separate entirely. <coughs> I got gotcha. you. Now, I think some of the guys have kind of got together. And, okay. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, this, actually, our seat, uh, best of the best was held at what are called Juniper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Local, local hunting club yeah. there. Yeah. Right. I've seen, I think I've heard or seen that name. Yeah, they rotated like around uh, How about was it year? six or seven hunts they had before seven, the eight. best of the best? That, I think and eight. each one's at a different club. Okay. Yeah. You know, a different place. And it's right. a fundraiser for them, too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. <coughs> About time to pass the torch off, though, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I bet it's a trick balancing that with doing all these uh, all these multi-day hunts that you got to go oh, to. Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. An unlikely friendship begins in the Paramount Plus original movie, Little Wing, starring Brooklyn Prince with Kelly Riley and Brian Cox. Reeling from her parents' divorce, Caitlin steals a valuable bird to save her home, but instead forms a bond with the owner, leading to a new outlook on life. Little Wing, now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. Head to ParamountPlus.com to try it free. Rated PG 13. You so, got to have a good family relationship too. I've been retired since 2011. Gotcha. And uh, the wife and I, there's no problem with me going. That's I know, good. I know my limits. Yeah. I know when I can and when I can't. Right. Just like <laughs> most husbands do. Yep. But I've been married uh, 56 years to the same woman. Wow. So well, congratulations on that. Yeah. That's that's a that's a big feat. Yep. June will make me fifty two. Fifty two. Hey, well, congratulations <laughs> to you too. I'm at the point right now I got four grandkids and two of them uh the two <coughs> oldest one will be seventeen in July and one will be seventeen in August. And uh they're kinda keeping me busy right now. I bet. Matter of fact, uh I was supposed to go to Creekmore and judge uh the Tar River Classic. Mm -hmm. My granddaughter told me, said, Look, we're doing this, you're gonna be here. Uh. <laughs> The law has spoke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, like he said, you know, you know your boundaries. Right. Uh, my wife don't say a word about me going to a field trial. Love it. And uh, she's that's something special. It is. Yeah. That's something special for sure. So we're getting close on time here. Um, I know we got some we got some grub to go get here Definitely. shortly. <laughs> if um, if y'all can give one piece of advice to anybody listening, maybe younger generation that's coming up. You know, what is something that y'all would like for guys that are either getting into it or in it and need to help keep it alive? What is something that y'all... First thing I tell you, learn learn the rule book mm -hmm. and go by that rule book. That's what they're there for. Just uh, keep everything honest. Honest. Second thing is, pick you a person that you got a lot of respect for that's been in this sport for a while uh, and you know they won't do something wrong with you right and, and and follow a little bit in their footsteps okay and uh i think that that's one of the main reasons we still stay in it i think right uh we a lot of young people you know trying to get into it i go to one well, now used to i know everybody there <laughs> now you know if i know a half of them <coughs> right i'll be pretty, doing pretty good but a lot right. of young people all get involved in it yeah which is good yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's what we need, need. Yeah. I think that's a huge thing. I think that's really what we need. You know, like you said earlier, you know, you go to a lot of these judges' meetings and, you know, I, I mean, I know I'm usually one of the youngest in yeah. there. And it's like, man, if we don't get some more people my age to get in here and start yeah. 
I Joe. think Joe, what, Joe, you might be one of the young, what, the, what's the little girl's name that's judging this week? I can't remember. She's what. probably the youngest, but I'm yeah. saying, you know, uh, right. Joe might be the youngest one. You and Joe, yeah, y'all think, probably the youngest son wasn't up there. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think me and him are about the same age, so yeah. yeah. I think that's right. Well, one other thing, too, I'd mention to a younger person that's trying to get involved in it. Get out here and judge. Mm -hmm. Volunteer your time. Learn. You can learn by just sitting in the judge's room what, what the procedure stuff is, what goes on. A lot. And we've seen a lot of young judges come through over the years, you know. A and, bunch. And, uh, so, I mean, right. and we've got respect for them. They, that, that's, that's what you want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you got to have them. Yep. And I got a lot of respect. You know, that's one of the things, you know, <clears throat> a lot of the, um, the older generation has a hard time letting, you know, the younger generation take control and sit back and watch. And that's one thing when I did it last year and doing, you know, and George doing it this year, you know, y'all didn't try to and get. No, I would entice it. Right. <laughs> Right. And, we, and we're there to help. Whatever, right. any help, anything goes wrong. We're, there's enough. There's enough. Uh, I don't know how you say it. Uh, experience experience yeah. in that room, just like this week. Oh man, all that experience in there. I, know I don't what, see nothing that could come up that we couldn't have. Right. I know one thing I want to do before we leave tomorrow is I want a picture of everybody in that judge's room. Like man, just <laughs> like you said, there's so much experience in that room. It is. But but um, well, that's the way it is. Most of the time, <coughs> right? These three day hunts. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard for a younger generation to get off work and oh, take it time. Is. And it is, it is. And see, that's why a lot of the hunts now are going, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday yeah. instead of used to. Everything was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Right. right. And uh, now a lot of Sunday hunts, or you know, like the James uh, River. It's uh, that, now that's a good that's a hunt I enjoy. But I got a fellow that goes with or a lot of time. I ride with Ralph Smith. Yeah. He's one of the most decorated soldiers. From Vietnam, wow. they said, "Road where we live and all." Yeah. He got all kind of, and he loves it. So we try to go every year, and that oh. and that and North Carolina State, about the only thing he judges anymore. Now. He's eighty three, something right. like that. Hmm. And uh, well, guys, you know, like I said, we're getting. I ain't going to make y'all late for dinner, so uh, <laughs> we're good. Uh, but um, guys, I really do appreciate y'all coming on and. Um, just from I, every, I talked to a few people and everybody just wanted me to mention to y'all. Just thank y'all for everything that y'all do. Appreciate it. Y'all, uh, like I said, you're a Hall of Famer, you know, and I'm sure a future Hall of Famer, I'm sure that's coming <laughs> down the pipe. I don't know how many more years we're going to do it. Well, I'm, I got <laughs> a feeling it's coming. That's right. That's I'll right. be honest with you, that was probably the most surprising thing that I've yeah. ever had to happen to me. Was, yeah. I was sitting in my house on the computer when the Masters was held at Swainsboro down there. Right. And uh, Paul West mm -hmm. got up to make the presentation, and he got talking about this person that was going to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. They judged this hunt, that hunt, and said he just mastered all the records. I said, "Damn, that's me!" <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you. I, you know, had I known, I probably would have made an effort. To it. <laughs> right. But I was just—I was shocked. That's you know, awesome. To say the least. I love it. I love it. Well, well same way with judging you, you know. Yeah. I mean, Clyde and Pete were the first two that ever ever made the front of the cover. Now, <laughs> and what year was that? Mm, we looked at it not long ago. 2017, 17. something like that. And you you won it here too, right? In uh, 2020 or 2021? 20, 21. I don't remember. Yeah. One, one of them you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's definitely an honor being here with y'all and talking, you. talking dogs and talking field traveling and <laughs> I can't we, think we, could, we could spend a half a day. If we oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's we could tell some stories. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good thing y'all set a dinner date at five, y'all. It's a forcing us to get out of here kind of thing. We've seen a lot of hat over the years. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. But uh, I'm sure down the pipe I may end up getting y'all back on. We'll tell some of those stories. And uh, see, maybe we won't. Maybe we won't. No. <laughs> we'll try to tell the best. Right. <laughs> The G-rated ones, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank y'all so much for coming on. Thank you, man. Let's go yeah, get thank some you. Thank you for what that? you do. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. All right, let's get some grilling. <laughs>